Valor and Victory. The strategic World War II squad level board game uh, has come to the PC. Actually, it came a few months ago. And just now, the new and first DLC in the series, Stalingrad, has been released. In this video, I will walk you through Valor and Victory and the new DLC, Stalingrad, and to show you how the game is played, what the different options are, and why you should consider adding this to your Steam library. Hey everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel. As many of you know, I am a big fan of these kind of strategic, tactical, operational, even um, war games that kind of simulate what a lot of people, myself included, had played on the tabletop for years, kind of these hex and counter base games, but also played them on PC for, shoot, over 20 years at this point. And the latest batch has just been getting better and better and better. And Valorant Victory, I think, is a great game for veterans like myself that love these type of games. And it's not a campaign game. It's just scenarios. It's individual battles that are not interlinked. So, you know, you don't progress through the scenarios. So it's a nice, relaxing way to play. It, the game, the scenarios don't take hours. It's more like 30 to 45 minutes, maybe. And it's also a great entry point for people curious about these styles of games, but feel a little intimidated by things like War in the East 2 or War Plan Pacific or Strategic Command. So this is a nice, nice entry point. And you can actually find, if you find this interesting, you can find a link to the Steam page for Valor and Victory down in the description below. So now with that out of the way, I'm going to walk you through this game bit by bit. Uh, game options and so on, there's really not a lot to talk about here. There aren't a ton of options, really. I mean, it's more about music and UI scale and so on. Um, you can load your save game, scenario editor, game manual. It comes with a really good um, game manual, which is important. It's not really long, but it gives you a lot of the basics. We're going to go into a new game here, and from the original version of Valor and Victory that came out. You get the Battle of Normandy, the American sector, as well as the British sector. And we're going to talk about the Battle of Stalingrad today. There's also tutorial as well as user created scenarios, but we're going to dive into the Battle of Stalingrad. Germany and its allies fought the Soviet Union for control of the city of Stalingrad, now Volgograd, in southern Russia. Marked by fierce close quarters combat, it is one of the bloodiest battles in the history of warfare with an estimated 2 million total casualties. Kind of a little personal side note, I am German as well as American, and actually my grandfather on my mother's side was in Stalingrad and actually made it out. So it's a, it's a very interesting th topic for me personally. So after this, you pick which, which, I guess, era you want to play. And then you have a number of scenarios. Now, you can see over here, it gives you the basics, who, what the type is of an objective. There's also elimination and exit. Objective means there are objectives on the map that you have to capture and occupy by the end of the game, which game turn is here, six, and then you've won. Uh, elimination is eliminate all of the enemy troops or more than of yours that get eliminated. And then exit means you have to exit the map on the other side. But uh, in Stalingrad, there are no exit ones, I believe. There is one exit scenario in Normandy on the American side. Uh, then it shows here who the defenders, who the attackers are. Attackers are the Axis, defenders are the Allied. Axis here, Germany, Allied Soviet Union. Starting player is the Axis. Victory conditions, attacker must control two objectives at the end of the last turn to win. We're going to go with the German Assault Begins. Why? Because there has some interesting um, play mechanics in there that uh, the first one here, the Vertiachi Bridgehead, did not, does not have. Here are the victory conditions, also objective. Attacker must control three objectives at the end of the last turn to win. So the scenario we're going to play, I'm not going to show 100% of the scenario, but I'm going to get it set up. And then as things crop up, we're going to talk about it. 
So September 14, 1942, Yelshanka suburbs south Stalingrad. The German assault on Stalingrad proper begins with a two-pronged drive on the center and especially southern districts of the city. This is mostly a residential area with huge apartment blocks of workers' housing. Since August 23rd, the city has been bombed viciously by the Luftwaffe, and already only the charred shells of concrete structures remain. Here are elements of the 14th Panzer Division, Panzergrenadier Regiment 103, 103, and the 1st Sturmgeschütz Bataillon of Panzer Regiment 36 push into what's left of the Yelshanka suburbs resisted by desperate elements of the 593rd Rifle Regiment, 131st Rifle Division. So, let's start. So the nice thing is the access starts right away. That way I can go into some of the basics. So there are six turns. Each side gets a turn, and there are multiple phases within each turn. So we're going to click on this, and we begin with the uh, command phase. So the command phase is always the first one. We can kind of look at the battlefield here. The German troops are on the south. Click on that. And the Soviets to the north. Now these are the objectives we need to capture. By the end of turn six, we need to successfully occupy three of these and flip them to our flag. Now in the command phase, you can split and merge squads. You can swap weapons between squads. You can call for a smoke screen if you have it. You can call for a light barrage mission if you have it. A heavy barrage mission if you have it, which we don't. Then you can also look at airstrikes, which we do have available, and I will show you how those work, as well as looking at the line of sight. Line of sight is very important. You can see here as we click on these units, it shows us where the line of sight is. This uh, tank here has line of sight to this Soviet squad that's within this building, as an example. Now we're going to take a quick look at some of the counters to describe what they mean. Here we've got infantry counters. We're going to look at a basic squadron. So this is a full squad. And what you have up here is shows here the nationality. The type of it is, it's a rifle squad. A half squad would have, instead of 465, it would have 263. What do these numbers mean? Well, the first number is the anti-personnel firepower. Uh, this is very important in determining damage and outcome of combat. The more squads you have in a stack, the higher this number goes. So it's all combined. So 4, 8, 12... Uh, 13 would be the total right here for your anti-personnel firepower. Then you've got your range of six and your casualty ratings. This is basically how many casualties they can take. So a half squad could take three, a full squad can take five. Here we have a leader. Now a leader has a modifier. This is a minus two. Now this is a 2d6 roll under system. So you want to roll as low as possible with 2d6. It simulates the tabletop, and, I, and you will see that in a minute when we get into combat, what that looks like. Uh, so the lower this is, so the higher the negative, so to speak, the better it is. And then the leader's name, as well as their anti-personnel firepower, their range, and their casualty rating. Then here we have support weapons, so these are grenades. This adds a minus one modifier. So again, it all of these modifiers stack, then you have modifiers also for terrain and cover and so on that keep rolls low. This is another support weapon. This is a light weapon. This is an MG-34. This is a light weapon. The three is an anti-tank firepower. So you use this against armored vehicles as well, which aren't, you know, they don't, the Soviets don't have any in this scenario. And then the six is the range. Then we look here and we have a tank, an AFV. Now this tank, the D here is the turret indicator. The gun anti-personnel firepower is 12. Then here the four, that is the bow MG anti-personnel uh, firepower. The total movement points and then the front armor and the rear armor. So it does matter where they're being shot 
at or from, so to speak. Uh, also very important here is facing for any AFEs. They can shoot where they are facing and where they have line of sight. They're a little bit more limited. Then here we have a transport. The transport is carrying a leader plus a squad, a full squad, and a support weapon. This is a T1, so they can only carry one leader, one full squad, or two half squads, and support weapons. A T2 can carry two of each, and a TH can carry a, a leader, weapon, a support weapon, and half a squad. Then here, 12, that shows the movement, and then the B and the A also is the armor rating. Now, they could also fire because they have people in there. When they don't have people in there, they can't really shoot much. I mean, they've got, I think this one actually has a mounted uh, tur gun turret here. This is an AAMG. So this is uh, anti-personnel firepower. So it does have four. So it can uh, shoot with a machine gun turret, so to speak. Uh, that it's mounted with. There are also other transports that have no firepower, um, especially as long as there aren't units in there. You can see all these transports have units in there. This one does not have a leader. So that goes through that. Movement's pretty simple. Each move, and I'll show you a movement phase. We'll go through that in a minute, but first let's do the command phase. We're going to call in an airstrike. So again, we need to capture these. I want to send these transports around this flank to capture here. And then I want to send these guys to the right to capture here. Now, the problem is once they leave this cover, they're going to be wide open. So we're going to have to displace and dislodge some of these Soviet unit units here to try to get some units over here and not just one stack. I mean, it, it, not just one squad or one leader. I mean, ideally a stack because once you're on one of these objectives, the Soviets will turn and attack you with everything they have and kind of abandon this forward position. So we're going to start with a command phase. And I want to first try to see if we can dislodge some of these guys out of here. They can hear it there and... It is a miss, a very clear miss. We're going to do one more. Go after these guys. And it's an inexact science when it comes to airstrikes. And this one hits, but it missed, actually. So fire support mission of 19. Dice modifier plus 2. The AP attack. So, yeah, it just did not exceed that. So that ends the command phase. I'm not going to worry about any more airstrikes. We're going to skip forward to the fire phase next. So in the fire phase, any unit that shoots now cannot move. Um, so we're just going to hold off with some of them. I am going to fire with our tanks. Now what you can do, you can do line of sight, and then you can see, okay, who can this tank hit? It can ha hit that unit. So again, you click on this to show line of sight, click off of it. But I left click the tank, the Panzer, a plus two modifier. So because this, this squad is in cover. And the roll is a 10. There you can see, and it's a miss. How do you read this? So the attacker's anti-personnel firepower is a 15 total. Dice modifier is plus two. Dice total is 10. Plus two is 12, and you'll always miss on a 12. But the way that would look is at a 15, you look here at the 11 to 18. If we would have rolled a six, then it would have resulted in three casualties. So that is the end of that. Now these guys are going to take a crack at them. Same modifiers, double sixes. It's about as bad as it gets. These guys don't have anything this guy does he can shoot here and that's another bad roll nine now we had a minus one because we had a leadership modifier they had a plus eight but we only had an eight to try to hit those guys have any uh, line of sight they do not and that'll end the fire phase because now i want to start moving some of these units so next up we have the move phase and the move phase you can exit a map you can load or unload or tow selected units. You can do a specific form of assault move. 
That gives them a plus one cover modifier. You can, once again, use smoke, but we have none available. And you can switch the facing of vehicles. You could rotate them or make them drive in reverse. So we're going to move. And what I'm going to do is actually we're going to move these guys, uh, this squad, further forward into cover. Now you can see the numbers here. These are the total movement point costs. It's a one in open terrain, a two to move into, let's call it more cover terrain. So house or in the woods that offer cover. So we're only going to move forward one. He could move out further, but he would be subject, the squad would be subject to intercept fire from here. Now I want to what we can try to do is be aggressive with these units and try to get them as close as possible. He's going to move forward and then probably take intercept fire. He does. Oh, and that's a very good roll. So casualties and pinned. Not good at all. Um, and basically, they're completely pinned now. Uh, there's not much else we can do. We could move the leader unit alone, but that would just be silly. And the problem is now they are out in the open, but we have another phase where maybe they can they can move further. This unit is just going to move forward one. I am not going to move them out into the open. We're going to move this transport into the woods, and that's it. Not going to subject them to that fire. We can move them here. They will take intercept fire, so we're not going to do that. And these guys, we're just going to move forward here. And that ends the move phase. And next is the defensive fire phase. So in the defensive fire phase, the defenders here, the Soviet Union, can shoot at the attackers. So it kind of, it doesn't give you free attacks per se, but it does give you the opportunity to inflict damage when it's not your turn but it's more limited because obviously you're not moving or anything like that. You know, they're, they're missing. They're not rolling very well. Uh, they don't have very high anti-personnel firepower, so a lot of misses. Plus, they're shooting into cover, so that's plus two, and they're just missing all around. We can see these guys are not very powerful. So we look there. It's just a single squad. Versus here, we've got two full squads and a leader. So probably in the next round, move these guys forward to try to take that position. So now we have the advance and assault phase. And here we can move these three or these two units. So the leader with this squad and their support weapon. And we're going to move them here because then we're at least within touching distance of that unit. Other than that, I'm not... Well, I'm going to move our Panzers just up the one position and end. And now it's the Allied turn. I'm going to show you the Allied turn, and then I'm going to start skipping forward a little bit to just not be overly repetitive over and over and over again, but kind of show you what it looks like when the AI works. So we've got some mortars trying to hit our Panzers here and knock them out as soon as possible, but they are not doing well. They are clearly clearly missing uh, they are taking a shot and the way that works is first they need to and um, they've immobilized the unit basically the way that works first they need to roll to see if they hit and then they need to roll to see if they do damage so these guys are not rolling well just above I mean having cover is huge if you're in a 2d6 system that means it makes a, a very sizable difference in the outcome of your rolls. So now the AI's turn is to move. They made an assault move here, so that helps them with cover. And once they're done with their movements, we will have a defensive fire phase. You see that unit's moving in over here. They want to fortify this flank, clearly. And they're moving into that building for further cover. So we will need to try to knock them out of here. So they took no action. And now we have our defensive fire phase. And we can just kind of go through here and see if we can inflict any damage. It's going to be a straight roll. And we pinned that unit. So that's really nice. These guys, we're going to go after that same unit. So they have a 16. And with that roll, unfortunately missed. 
We're going to shoot these guys. A6, and they are now pinned. Uh, these guys are immobilized, but they can still shoot and hopefully rally. And they are, the other squad is also pinned. So these guys are pinned down. When a unit is pinned, they are less effective in combat. Try to take out those guys, inflict some damage. That was really good. They took some casualties. So now we're looking at a leader and one squad left. They are definitely vulnerable, so we're going to continue hammering them and try to get them out of that position. Took more casualties, so now all that's left is the one leader. Um, but I think with these guys, we are going to... Yeah, we'll try to eliminate that leader. A seven roll. Yeah, he missed. Barely. Barely. But that ends our defensive fire phase. And now the advance and assault phase for the Soviets will begin. So this unit now moved out of the cover from that building and moved into the cover of the woods. So we've had a few rallies here, uh, also on our side. So now we can issue commands, and we will, of course, issue airstrike commands against these guys. I'm not going to do it over here because I don't want my own units to take damage. And they are now pinned. That's great. They'll be much easier to destroy. I'm going to send in another airstrike for right here. And they are destroyed. That was a fantastic hit. And now we're going to try... Oh, times two. That's not a good modifier, but... May as well try. And bah, that, was, that was not good. So anyway, that ends that. We're going to go to our fire phase now. And let's see if we can eliminate these guys with our panzers firing on them. A low roll, they're going to be destroyed. Yep, that did exactly what we wanted them to do. I mean, exactly what we wanted to happen. Here, let's see if we can inflict some damage here. Pinning them would be nice. Nope, that is a miss. These guys will go after them. That's a pretty good roll. They took some casualties, so they have just that one squad left. So other than that, I think we're going to lay down some cover fire with these guys over here. Oh, Snake Eyes. Casualties and pin. Snake Eyes, of course, that's the best one there. So we've got a pin squad and then a leader. So these they're they're open for assault. So we're going to end that and go to our move phase next. And I think what we're going to do here is No, that's not what I wanted. I misclicked. Son of a gun. Uh that was that was not what I wanted. Ugh. That's frustrating. All right, that's what I wanted. That was a misclick. A terrible misclick. All right, these guys, we're going to go with the uh, assault move. So that helps with their cover. And they're going to move out. And, of course, they're going to take the opportunity fire, ah, which did inflict damage on them. But then now they're within assault range. These guys were also going to do the assault move, which gives them cover. And they've entered the building. Six, and that's a miss. That is perfect. Now, as you can tell, these guys cannot do any of those moves. Uh, in here, what we can do now, though, is... Uh, they're immobilized, so I can't take them out, unfortunately. So they're just stuck here right now. And that's going to end that. And now the AI defensive fire phase is going to happen. Again, they are missing with their mortars, trying to take out our panzers. So no luck so far. We will start to move the panzers out here relatively soon. Uh, that's a straight roll, and they took some casualties here. Now we've got the advanced... Assault phase. How many do we have left? Uh, we have a full squad and a half squad. 
against these guys. So we're going to take our full assault here. Roll low at five. And they got destroyed. We took that ground. Um, we've got a pinned unit now, but that's okay. And these guys are going to move out. And then here... They've got a full two full squads. What do we have here? A full squad and a half squad. Oh, three full squads here. That's just one squad. I think what I'm going to do here, we're going to make an assault in this position, see if we can eliminate those guys. And we did. Here, this is too, too risky, in my opinion. I mean, we are in the open. We're just going to move in here so we're within the same building at least and no longer out in the open. And now we're going to move our panzers up as well. And these transports. And that will end that. And now it's the Allied's turn. And now I'm going to start speeding forward a little bit. So that uh, Soviet turn really didn't produce much. They moved forward here a little bit. Um... But this unit in the defensive phase really got hammered. So that's about really all she wrote there. And another fire phase. Now we're going to take the Panzer and see if we can eliminate these guys. That would be great if we could. We missed. So let's go with them. Try that. That's a better roll. And they are now destroyed. These guys don't have line of sight anywhere. So we're not going to worry about that. And we're going to go to our move phase next. In this move phase, we are going to move these guys all the way out here. Give them cover. Try to outflank the Soviets. Because again, our goal is to head up here and take these positions respectively um don't really want to open up this panzer too much let's see if we can get that unit out of here go into the open here we could take something from that that's a pretty powerful squad right there i'm gonna just kind of move along here let's see what do we have here anyway Two full squads, a half squad, plus a leader. This is three full squads plus a leader. That is one squad plus a leader. So we're going to move these guys in here. So, ooh, that's a good roll for them. And now, what do we what do we have here? Full and a half squad. We can still take them out in the assault phase. They have fired. So we're just going to move this tank right along here and just merrily move on through these guys I think I can get them through without taking any opportunity fire So, yeah, we moved this whole, all these guys all the way around here, and that will end that. These guys, unfortunately, okay, they, they were able to get that squad out, and that's about it. Uh, so, they will be able to do something uh, in the future. So, now it's a defensive fire phase for the Soviets. Let's see what they're going to do. They're going to attack these guys up here with mortar fire. Ugh, and that transport got destroyed. Well, that's unfortunate. And that unit just got destroyed. Okay, never mind. <laughs> well, the best laid plans. Uh, all right, so we're going to assault these guys, see if we can get rid of them. Good roll would be nice. And defender losses three, attacker losses six. Ugh. Uh, I mean, they don't have much left yet, but that's... That's all there is. I'm just going to change the facing on that one. These guys are just going to continue their movement up north. 
And that'll and that announced the Allied turn. All right, let's get this moving forward here a little bit. Their command phase aren't going to do much, and now their fire phase will be interesting what they do. That mortar got lucky once, or lucky twice, their mortars did. They're going to try to take out that tank, and no damage taken. So the goal here is to move that tank up. That's not a good roll. All right, that's going to take care of that. But these guys are going to move. If I was them, I would move him in here. But he's not moving. I see, if I would have moved him in here and then assaulted this, this squad here, I need to get them out as fast as possible. But we have defensive fire here. If they can eliminate that leader, yeah, that'll do it. That's destroyed. So hopefully we'll have the time to just get the heck out of there. Other than that, do they have line of sight on anybody? No. All right, well, then there's no more defensive fire to be had. And now the Soviets will advance and assault. So they move forward, but they can't attack. Uh, but these guys are going <laughs> to crush this poor squad in here. Uh, we, we really need to get them out of there. There's nothing to do here in the fire phase. Um, no, no, there's really not much we can do. I just want to move them out in the move phase. Just like get them out of here. Opportunity fire. Please roll high. And they do. They did take casualties. But at least that leader can somehow get out of there. These guys are still completely useless. I don't know what I want to do with this tank. If I want to continue up here and take out some of these positions because the Soviets really don't have many units left. They've got they have a half squad here with mortar, a half squad here with mortar. And they really have their two squads in this building. And that's really where everybody is. So I'm going to take the tank. Kind of move it here. And just move out. There you go. There's, there's no need to do really anything else other than try to occupy these positions up here and hope we can get up there. Now this guy is still all the way down here and we'll try to move him along the road and around to help out there. And then these guys, I think, We'll just occupy that position. We'll just have those guys sit there and try to defend those positions. I mean, we can occupy those three. It's turn four of six. We've got a decent chance of getting through this. Now, we've taken... Is he going to kill them? No, he's going to miss. We've taken, you know, a decent amount of damage. Uh, I don't know where we sit right now in total casualty numbers. But it's it's okay. We'll at least get to the objectives. Now, the question is, of course, will we be able to hold those objectives? Uh, their advanced assault phase. I think we're going to start seeing... Oh, it's the Axis. Sorry, it's our advanced assault phase. So we can start moving these guys. Oh, they're done. Yeah, get him out of there. Sorry, didn't realize it wasn't. It was still my turn. Well, curious to see what the Soviets do now. They're gonna try to hammer us with mortar, and they did destroy that leader unit. But it was just one leader unit. The key ones are all over here, and those guys up there, if they can hold with that Panzer, we've got a chance. Now they're taking up positions within cover. It's going to be difficult. Uh, we can also split our squads into a few more of these positions. So now it's defensive fire phase. And we will use the tank, who has no line of sight. These guys do against that half squad right there. Uh, that's, that's a really bad roll. 
And other than that, nobody has line of sight anywhere. All right, so we'll continue. So they're going to advance one. That's what I kind of expected. They've got to dislodge these units. Now, they're moving all of these guys up here, kind of leaving us alone up here for right now. I don't think they can reach us in time. So what I might do, I've got nothing to do in our command phase. So now we have our fire phase. And they're going to take a pop again here. A low roll would be nice, but we missed. And the tank is not facing. Well, he can get this guy. Try to take those guys out in cover position. And unfortunately missed. Yeah, none of these guys can really do anything to anybody. I don't think they're in. No, there's no line of sight there. And now it's time for the move phase. So I think what we're going to do here... Got two full squads and a leader. So what I'll actually do is we're going to move them right here. Then I think I'm going to move the Panzer over. Can I get them over there as well? Yes. And I will turn. So now we are facing the direction of any possible danger. Now I'm going to take these guys and move them here. And unload those units. And those units then will take that position. We'll turn these guys. Uh, these guys may as well just stay put right now. Uh, don't need them to move. We are occupying four spots. This is the vulnerable one. If the AI continues with their main squads towards him, we've got the manpower here. And what I may end up doing is sending this squad and leader over here to occupy that position as well. But for right now, we're just going to leave it as is. That ends the move phase. And now it's the Soviets' defensive fire phase. And no damage and miss again from mortar. Another mortar attack in the same position. And now they pinned our unit there. Yeah, they're just going to hammer that position. Hammer it, hammer it. And we are taking casualties. Yeah, I mean, you can see they've got a 15 there. Destroyed. So all we have left is our, our panzer. So we're just going to turn them around these guys we're going to turn and these guys we're going to move here just for now and kind of see where it goes that's really all we can do and now we'll see what the soviets do on their phase it's time to fire and they're going to try to dislodge us here no damage taken i could actually send a squad this way to try to take out that mortar unit might not be a bad idea. But I I mean, we're in turn five of six. So I don't necessarily want to do that. See, they're occupying a great position here because now they're in, I mean, these guys, this tank has no line of sight there. They do have it here against this mortar unit, which we will take. Uh, we definitely have to roll a lot better than that. Nothing from them. This guy can. It's a plus two because they've got some cover. That's a decent roll, and that unit is now pinned. And that ends our defensive fire phase, and now they're going to move one with their unpinned unit. Okay, they're moving this way. But we've got four spots right now, and now it is our turn. In a rally... I don't know if I want to send squad out we have here. Ah, they could really use the reinforcements in this position to strengthen it. Because we are holding that with that AFV. So we have fire phase. Tank's going to go after that mortar unit. 
That's bad. I just cannot roll at all. We're going to go after that pin mortar unit, hopefully destroy them. And no, that's that's what we call a miss. But maybe the tank can do better. It's a decent roll. Just not good enough. All right, that ends the fire phase. Now we have a move phase. I'm going to take the risk. In six of six, we're going to move. I'm going to take opportunity to fire here. An eight. Uh, they are pinned. Shoot. We're not going to get there in time, are we? That's a miss. Another opportunity attack. Seven. That's better. And destroyed. Damn it. So we took a risk. It didn't pay off. Not even a little bit. That's frustrating. So what this is here, this is basically a fire zone. So when you enter it, it will trigger an automatic uh, fire in this situation, if I remember correctly, if you do another move. So we've got a AI defensive phase and no damage there. We're down to the wire here now um, as they're trying to take out those units. Now when this half squad um, rallies, um, I'm just going to move them right back into that position. So now the allied turn on six of six. Well, that ended it. We couldn't move him. We could not get that unit over there. So he took some casualties there. I don't think they can displace us. I, I feel like we will get the three objectives we want. And see, now that unit is destroyed because they were caught in the open and pinned. That was a risk I took that did not pay off at all. But they shot, so they can't move. So they can't retake those positions. That wasn't necessarily the smartest move. So here we are going to... I mean, it really doesn't matter. We'll try to take out that half squad down there. And they are destroyed. Very nice. And now that tank will try to take out these guys. Good roll. Some casualties there, and that ends our fire phase. And now the AI, they can only move one and really not do anything from that. And it is a major victory. So loss is 50%. They lost 72% and a score of 418. We took actually four versus the three that we needed to. And there you have it. That is a game of valor and victory. A scenario played out and kind of everything that goes into it it's really fun it's, it's a great way to pass you know 30 minutes to an hour if you just want to play a quick scenario and to kind of learn how these hex and counter based war games go let me know your thoughts if you've played valor and victory either tabletop or the pc version if you play other of these types of games i don't know war in the east 2 or war in the pacific or anything like that strategic command let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Uh, join the Discord if you haven't done so. You can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, links are down in the description as well as the Patreon and the Nexus GG store and the link to Valor and Victory in Steam. So until next time, I'm Ramble Guy, and I will talk to you then.